I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today. I'm here in Bucharest, Romania, where we'll be talking about the Fulbright Commission and Arizona State University. Rodika Mihaila was the founder of the American Studies program at the University of Bucharest and is now the executive director of the Romanian U.S. Fulbright Commission. Ilana Alexandra Orlich is a professor of Romanian studies at Arizona State University and the Honorary Consul General of Romania in Arizona. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank well, you for having us. Well, we're delighted you guys can both can be here. Uh, Rodika, maybe if we could start with you. Can you say a word or two about the Fulbright Commission and how that got started here and when it got started in Romania? Yeah. Um, I think that everybody knows what the uh, Fulbright program is and how back in 1946, Senator Fulbright uh, came, launched this generous program uh, called Fulbright from his name, uh, and uh, which was supposed to foster better relations between the United States and the other countries of the world, and uh, also to encourage mutual understanding and uh, between, between cultures and peoples. Now, uh, in Romania, Fulbright first came in 1960. So last year we celebrated five, 55 years since, uh, since Fulbright came, but uh, it came only with Americans, mostly with Americans, uh, either students, uh, American students, or uh, uh, Fulbrighters, uh, lecturers. Uh, and uh, then in uh, 1993, um, the Fulbright Commission was uh, uh, founded, and uh, it was uh, founded based on an agreement between uh, uh, the two governments. Uh, and uh, uh, the commission is supposed to administer uh, the grants all sorts of grants, not only uh, Fulbright, but also Hubert Humphrey grant and uh, other grants, uh, also sponsored by U.S. government. And uh, now, in uh, um, 2014, a new agreement was signed between the two governments, and uh, um, the great advantage of this new agreement is the increased participation of the Romanian government to the um, financial uh, contribution. Um, so that now we almost reach parity, which allowed us to increase the number of grants, uh, to have more uh, um, uh, activities connected with our broader mandate, uh, and so on and so forth. Great. Well, thank yeah. you. Well, that's interesting, because uh, in terms of the number of grants, it's not, from my perspective, it's not just the number of grants, it's also the quality of what's happening here. And maybe if we could bring you, Alana, into this discussion as well. So. Uh, Arizona State University somehow has a presence here in Romania, which I understand has something to do with you. So can you explain, are you trying to do some of the same things that the Fulbright Commission is trying to do as well? Well, certainly I'm sure that there is some overlap, but uh, uh, in the interest of uh, full disclosure, let me say that Arizona State University is the number one top producer of Fulbright scholars. It is also uh, voted the number one public university by international students. So you can see the connection between Arizona State University and Fulbright and study abroad. So I want to bring in the issue of study abroad, which I have been directed in Romania, directing in Romania and Central and Eastern Europe for the past 18 years. Uh, this study abroad certainly has to do with a transition from a traditional type of university where we're looking at the Danube as a Byzantine counterpart of the commercial Rhine, or the Black Sea as a place where Ovid was exiled, or the Romanian monasteries as the, the outpost of a late Renaissance in Europe, all of a sudden this was transformed with the adv advent of Arizona State University becoming the new American university that emphasized new knowledge, local solution, global impact. All of a sudden, everything we were doing had to do with uh, cultural and religious values, with uh, political tradition and practice, with uh, societal stereotyping and uh, prejudice. And all of a sudden, the Fulbright was the perfect 
uh, the perfect scenario by which all this could be utilized. Our university, which had developed extraordinary programs, the School of Earth and Space uh, uh, Exploration, the uh, Center for Nanotechnology in Society, uh, the School of Sustainability, the Global Institute of Sustainable Outcomes, all of these came in as interesting, important, and valuable uh, material so that almost every year our program produced Fulbright scholars, students who had been in Romania and Central Europe through our ASU study abroad, who then applied for the Fulbright and, of course, were successful uh, recipients. Again, the emphasis at the New American University being on new knowledge, uh, sustainable solutions, global impact, all of, you, all of which were uh, very nicely intertwined with the vision of the Fulbright um, mission. Well, fair enough. Well, you mentioned the issue of culture just a second ago. Yes. How do we reconcile that? Maybe I could ask uh, both of you that. Uh, how do we reconcile the issues of, of not everything in the United States and Romania are the same? I mean, there are different cultures. And, and clearly what we want to do through study abroad and through Fulbright is to kind of bridge those gaps in some way. But what happens if, if there are just some inherently uh, things, if there are things that are inherently don't work? Like so that one country b believes in one thing and one country believes in another. How do we deal with that uh, when students are here and professors are here? Well, I could respond to that in terms of what Arizona State University is doing and the recent creation of, let's say, uh, the School for um, Future Innovation in Society. How does innovation work? Teaching students, uh, how does it work? Teaching students to think outside the box, uh, changing the mindset, um, contributing to advancing innovation predicated on moral and ethical understanding of the role of innovation in all these societies. Uh, so that we are looking at new collaborative efforts. So whenever we come to Romania, and of course this is a very uh, foundation of our future success with the Fulbright, we look at collaboration. We have, for instance, in the School for the uh, Future Innovation in Society, the Future of Innovation in Society, we have a center for training and for engagement in the sciences and society. Certainly, that simply means that we are going to be mindful. We are going to teach the students about the Roma people. How can integration occur? What are some of the sustainable solutions? To what extent this kind of, uh, of, uh, uh, of assessment of technology can help, can impact society? Again, we have a president who has received an award, a very prestigious uh, Carnegie Award for academic leadership in innovation. This is what we do. We are number one, the number one school in excellence, access, and innovation. So the Fulbright is a perfect uh, conduit for implementing this sort of societal uh, innovation and transformation. We have collaborative efforts with the School of Sustainability at the Babish Boya University. We have uh, a very good collaboration with um, all kinds of programs that have to do with policy making, with technological assessment, with decision making processes. Uh, for instance, the city of Cluj that has to do with developing community building uh, decision making policies that are involving our students directly. So during the summer program, we benefit from what we learn in, in our courses and implement them in Romania, in Central and Eastern Europe during our program abroad. Fair enough. And uh, Rodika, do you have uh, a thought or two about that as well? Uh, well, I think your question was about how, how uh, what are the methods by, by which we try to bridge, therefore, the cultural differences. And uh, I'm talking from the point of view of the Fulbrighters coming to, to Romania, for instance, and Romanians going there. So only a Fulbright, not what our universities do for this. I mean, we also create institutional structures that 
uh, encourage uh, encourage uh, trans and uh, inter and uh, um, cross cultural uh, cross cultural studies. Uh, so what we do for uh, Fulbrighters is, uh, uh, you know, we try to give them. Um, to tell them what to expect from Romania when they come. For instance, uh, we organize orientation sessions for them uh, in which we uh, try to, to bring people also from the embassy to, to explain to them various aspects of life in Romania or from, from the point of view of an American uh, living in uh, Romania. Uh, and uh, uh, the same thing is done for Romanians going to the United States. Uh, today, even today, we have such an orientation for pre-departure orientation for the cohort of uh, uh, Romanians going to to United States. Uh, but we also encourage very much topics, projects, uh, which have this comparative uh, component included in them. For instance, uh, we encourage a project on uh, comparison between Carpathian Mountains and Appalachian Mountains with uh, highlands traditions and preservations and documentation of uh, these traditions in which, uh, and this is a project we continued uh, through conferences organized in uh, Romania or and included both American and uh, Romanian uh, scholars and researchers. Well, that's interesting. But but how do we? But what if, I wanted to get to the issue of the differences. So so let's assume that we're studying cultures of people in different mountains, whether it's the Appalachian Mountains or the Carpathians. So so how do our universities and how do our whether it's Fulbright or whether it's our universities, whether it's ASU or any other university. How do you, as, as experts, suggest that we address those cultural differences? Uh, it seems that uh, uh, the universities themselves uh, 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 take care of this. But uh, how? You know, this is, uh, uh, for instance, uh, all the students are engaged in all sorts of, uh, of uh, extracurricular activities. Many Americans coming here uh, work as volunteers in various associations to help uh, orphan, orphan children or uh, Roma children. Or, um, and um, also, um, they organize um, they organize uh, all sorts of activities themselves. They, they initiate these activities. For instance, now we have a Fulbrighter, Tara Skurtu is her name, and she is a poet. She is very young. She, uh, and she organized a uh, sort of uh, um, poetry, poetry club and, and uh, also uh, um, uh, magazine poetry in, in which uh, students can uh, either translate poetry from Romanian to English, English to Romania, mm -hmm. or create their own, uh, publish their own poetry. I mean, these are important things because this can't be done as you uh, you, are, you ask your questions. This can't be done from a um, centralized perspective. You know, these are small things and they, they, they become integrated in the community. Sure. Uh, we had, for instance, uh, if maybe I talk too much uh, on this topic, but I just want to tell you about it. Um, uh, one of the Fulbrighters, uh, Stephen Cutler, who is a sociologist and who came here and, and um, uh, really uh, founded, created uh, a graduate program in aging, a problem of aging. And, um, he he uh, says in a testimonial that he thinks that the contact, everyday contact with people around him, you know, uh, uh, was as important as his, his academic experience uh, in Romania. Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> And Alana, did you have a thought or two about that? Um, yes, I have a thought of two, and of course it deals directly with some of the courses we teach at ASU and why exactly the students could not read Hamlet very comfortably in Tempe, Arizona. Why would they have to come to Eastern Europe? 
Well, because mm -hmm. here you see a Hamlet where, as in Boris Akunin's play, all of a sudden Horatio is a spy and he has been plotting all along to overthrow Hamlet from the throne of Denmark to bring in Fortinbras, and all of a sudden Polonius has been plotting with the king of France to bring in Laertes. Of course, this becomes significant because Boris Akunin, who writes the play Hamlet, a version, is a Russian living in exile in London, and the issue of spying is something very current. So all of a sudden, once we come here, we can see a different Hamlet. We can see many different classical plays where Chekhov's Cherry Orchard becomes a production in which uh, Petya Trofimov from the Cherry Orchard is very clearly a propagandist of the uh, emerging Bolshevik regime. And the students who see the Stalinist buildings, who visit Ceausescu's People's Palace, who realize how communication is not only intercultural, but it can be used as an instrument for propaganda in times of political distress, uh, all of a sudden they absorb this kind of information, so it becomes essential to use culture in order to translate political uh, issues, global impact. So then you have students who will meet uh, somewhere in the garden of the Schönbrunn in Vienna, a violinist who is a student somewhere uh, at the Charles University in Prague, so they set up a coffee date for the following evening when we are in Prague and we go to the therapy cafe and all of a sudden they start talking about the Hrad, about Václav Havel, and they talk about the demise of the Soviet bloc and not only that, what will happen to this student who after Charles University had plans to go to Cambridge but Brexit has made it impossible for her to do so and all of a sudden our students from Arizona State, who also come from other uh, states, of course, they are not just uh, Arizona locals, we have students from all over the United States, all of a sudden the students are overwhelmed with the immediacy, the impact of what is happening in the oldest and tiniest of the continents that is in constant turmoil uh, in terms through which culture can be helpful. Innovation can be predicated on cultural transfer that is transformed in a way that impacts the current societies, uh, the uh, current societies in very interesting ways. Let me give you an example. There is an emphasis and importance of the ethnic element, all good and well, but think about the fact that this very emphasis on the importance of ethnicity, which was accomplished beautifully at a certain level through the European Union also encouraged separatist movements that all of a sudden derail the states uh, of the European Union itself. So the students can see that in action. Well, that's a really interesting answer because if I understood what you just said correctly, you, you somehow combined the field, the humanities and the social sciences in your answer. And I wonder if maybe if you could say a word or two more about that, if you wouldn't mind, about how does that intersection work both in terms of the courses that you're offering and in terms of the experience that students are going to get here in Romania? Absolutely. It is important, geography is destiny, uh, for us to be in Romania for starters. This is a place where you had an Austro-Hungarian Empire, you had the Southern Romania that was under the Turkish Ottoman Empire, and you have an Eastern Romania that is somewhat attached to Tsarist Russia. So you do have all the three empires that were dissolved at the end of World War I, and you also have a place that clearly lived through the Stalinist era. So the students can see in action, ethnic interaction. Um, we go to Cluj and within a square mile, we see Greek Catholic cathedrals, Roman Catholic cathedrals, old synagogues in which we see theater productions. Um, they also see Lutheran churches, Protestant churches, and then they see a community that is harmoniously living uh, with no trace whatsoever of tension or conflict, they become very happy when they can read signs in Romanian, signs in Hungarian, uh, 
an opportunity for me to talk about linguistic uh, elements. The fact that Romanian is a paradox. You say merci for thank you, but you say da as in Russian for yes. Uh, and so the students are embroiled in this kind of culture that leads to the social sciences. Why this is not particularly a nation state area. It is based on communities. Communities are identified through religion. If you are Romanian, you are most likely Orthodox. If you are Hungarian, you are most likely Catholic. Um, uh, if you are in the central part of Transylvania, certainly you could be Protestant. Uh, if you go to Eastern Romania, you are a certain type of Orthodox that is very clearly closer to the Russian prototype. But then if you go to Dobroja at the Black Sea, all of a sudden you see a few mosques and you also see the ruin of Greek temples. You realize that this is, Jason, this is where Jason looked for the Golden Fleece. But you also realize that this is an important strategic point for the United States. And you understand the continuity that is guaranteed by cultural survival, but which is updated currently by politics, practice, implementation of various um, projects that lead to safety and clearly have a global impact. So uh, it's, it's a matter of having intercultural communication in the traditional way, but projected toward advancing cultural innovation and societal change. Well, that was a very sophisticated answer. How does a middle class kid in the United States who knows very little of what you just said, how do they do when they come to study abroad here? And maybe I could ask both of you that. If you only knew how many messages I receive from students who come from small communities, very small communities, Heber, Arizona, I mean, whoever heard of that uh, place, who now are in Washington, who now are enrolled in the, at the London School of Economics, who now work for the European Union. Um, it is, and this is again the merit of Arizona State University and its incredible uh, new university status that, inc that encourages new knowledge, global impact, the idea of thinking outside the Heber, Arizona territory into the global uh, universe. And so these students literally are learning an alphabet of cultural sophistication and political appropriation. They can see the remnants of the Ottoman Empire very clearly. They can, and it was very funny, we were watching while we were here this summer, uh, the, the, um, uh, the game between Austria and Hungary, and they were having a, a a ball because they were saying Austria and Hungary professor but that was the Austro-Hungarian Empire wasn't it and yes it was so we are in the courtyard of the Imperial uh, Palace in Vienna but we understand about Maximilian going to Mexico students are wonderful recipients of new information and this is the role of Arizona State University and and my role and, of course, the role of our university leadership that makes innovation important. Thank you. Rodika, maybe if we can give you the final word. We only have a few minutes left. Maybe yeah. in, uh, if you can just talk a little bit about that middle-class student who comes to the United, from the United States to somehow to Fulbright. Um, how do you deal with them? Um, you see, we have, we have uh, various categories of students coming from the United States, and the, the newest category is represented by the so-called uh, English teaching assistants. And these English teaching assistants are um, uh, students uh, uh, with uh, any kind of degree. In other words, they only can have graduated from college, so not, not from graduate studies. or uh, and, uh, they, uh, they are supposed, uh, there are many of them are people who have never left the United States. Uh, they come to Romania uh, because of some, um, because they hear about some connection they may have with, with a country. 
for instance, uh, somebody uh, came and said, you know, my uh, grandfather came from Romania, but we don't know where exactly he came from, from a village near Brasov. And uh, he said, we were never, we were never interested in, uh, in establishing uh, this uh, identity, you know, this line of uh, um, identity. And, and now she, uh, she came to Romania, she tried to, to find her origins. Uh, and uh, um, they, these people, we sent them to uh, not maybe only to the top universities where we would rather send scholars or, you know, my, we send them even to smaller places to where they can interact with people. It's very, very important. For many Romanians, they are the only Americans, the real Americans they, they ever talk to. Uh, so we send them uh, like uh, to uh, to the western part of the country, to uh, eastern part. I mean, uh, and uh, and this is a way in which uh, they integrate into society by establishing personal connections and by by uh, discovering the world through Romania for the first time. Well, thank you, and thank you for those personal connections, and thank you both for those personal connections. For additional information about our guest today, please visit fulbright.ro or asu.edu. If you have comments or suggestions about higher education today, please send an email to our viewer mailbox at highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. Special thanks to UDC TV and the Romanian Public Television here in Bucharest. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.